Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to watch my live streams, and like and subscribe to live a thousand years next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Rose from The Legend of Dragoon, the grumpiest dragoon, but that's pretty understandable. She's been around for a thousand years. Nobody is remaking games from her childhood, but someone should remake Legends of Dragoon. Just don't touch the voice acting, it's perfect. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need that Dragoon transformation, getting more dangerous to protect the world from other danger. Next, we need to get a monster transformation to protect the world with some ethically questionable actions. Finally, we need to make sure we're pretty good with a sword. It's basically just a rhythm game. I should make her a bard. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. Dexterity will be number one. Rose rocks, a multitude of finesse weapons but they're all kind of just rapiers. Intelligence after that. If you're not landing those additions, you're probably using some massive dragoon bombs. Constitution next, you can't live a thousand years if you don't live through a big war first. Follow that up with strength. While your weapons are light enough to swing, you're not lacking in might. Wisdom is a bit low. You don't really need it for anything. We'll dump charisma though. Rose's dour mood can put some people off. Yeah, I guess I can't make her a bard then. Rose is weird. She's a human, but she's super duper old because of a magical item, so... Uh, custom lineage that'll give us a feat like skill expert for another skill like acrobatics expertise in a skill like history that's where the custom lineage comes in you were alive for a thousand years you've got to know everything you lived through bump your dexterity with a free point from the feat bump your intelligence with your two free points from custom lineage and since we get an extra skill from skill expert we don't need one from custom lineage so grab dark vision instead if you're gonna make shadow bombs everywhere you need to see in the dark we'll grab two more skills from the soldier background athletics and intimidation that all of you do flip so good they're scary we'll kick things off as a wizard letting you grab two skills from the wizard list like history and arcana see i said we would get history at level one i wouldn't lie to you i'm definitely not the black monster that destroyed your hometown the spells we need come a bit later for now we'll get a few ways to use swords that kind of aren't swords like sword burst a cantrip that forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures within five feet of you dealing a d6 of force damage to those that fail booming blade lets you make a melee weapon attack after that if the creature you hit moves willingly they take a d8 of thunder damage blade ward lets you block to reduce some damage, taking half damage from bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage for the next round. It's kind of bad. You should probably just use the shield spell instead, adding five to your AC as a reaction. It requires a spell slot though, so it's a bit more resource heavy. Cause fear forces a wisdom saving throw on a creature, failing that they're frightened of you. If they succeed, they're into it. Identify tells you what a magical item is, how many charges it has left, someone has to be doing that in the party, and Dart doesn't seem like mm, the brightest guy. Featherfall prevents up to five falling creatures from taking falling damage as a reaction. We can't fly at level one, but we can fall with style. Jump will triple your jump distance, and Long Strider will add 10 feet to your movement speed. Both will get you a little more mobility early on. You can get even more mobile at the second level of Wizard as a Blade Singer. When you activate a Blade Song, your movement speed is increased by 10. You can add your Intelligence modifier to your Concentration saves and AC. You also gain proficiency with a one-handed weapon of your choice, like a Rapier. We could grab two more spells at this point. We really don't need any more from the first level. Speaking of first level, first level Fighters get a Fighting Style like dueling to add two to the damage of the attacks you make with a weapon you're wielding one-handed. It helps a gish go swish swish. You also get second wind letting you heal 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest. It's just a little healing not the big astral drain we'll be getting later. Second level fighters get action surge letting you make two actions in one turn once per short rest. You could mix in a booming blade or just do two booming blades at this point there's no reason not to until we get extra attack then it'll be a little different. We'll go back to wizard for that since blade singers eventually get it. Look Rose joins the party after being in a full war and doing some morally questionable activities for a millennia. She's not level one. Third level wizards can learn second level spells. Shadow Blade creates a shadowy blade that deals 2d8 psychic damage. It's finesse, meaning you can use your dexterity modifier for the attack and damage rolls, and it has advantage on attacks in dim or dark light. It's basically the best weapon you can use as a finesse fighter, especially as an edgy one. If you'd rather use regular steel, magic weapon adds one to the attack and damage rolls of a weapon for an hour and makes it magical in terms of overcoming resistances. It's a personal preference thing. Fourth level wizards 
Just get an ability score improvement, start off bumping your dexterity since really that's what you're going to be using most of the time for now. Not with Wither and Bloom though, that forces a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 10 foot radius sphere, dealing 2d6 necrotic damage to those that fail. That's only to creatures of your choice, but a friendly creature gets to heal one of their hit die. It's damage and healing, like the Astral Drain, but kind of weak. Stronger version will come later. Fifth level wizards can learn third level spells, and third level spells are the coolest. Fly gives a creature a 60 foot flying speed for 10 minutes. Part of me wanted to go Asimar for Rose for the transformation aspect, but the fallen Asimar can't actually fly, so I'll use this spell. If you'd rather just make a bunch of attacks with your additions, haste gives you an extra action to make one more attack per round, or dash, or disengage, or hide, or use an object. It also doubles your movement speed, adds two to your AC, and gives you advantage on dexterity saving throws. It's a very good buff, but after it ends, you need to take a round off of actions and reactions. Sixth level Blade Singers get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks instead of one with your action. The Blade Singer version can also replace one attack with a cantrip, so there's no reason not to use Booming Blade, since that's a weapon attack that now deals an extra d8 of thunder damage. It'll also discourage your opponent from moving. That's probably why everyone stands still during the fights in the game. For this level spells, Fear forces a wisdom saving throw on creatures in a 60 foot cone. Failing that, they're frightened of you and have to spend their action dashing away. If they succeed, they're into it. Spirit Shroud puts some darkness stank on your attacks, adding a d8 of necrotic radiant or cold damage. It also slows creatures' movement speed and prevents them from healing within a 10 foot radius where you're hitting them. Haste is probably better, since it just lets you make another attack. It's my favorite spell though, so I'm a little biased. Seventh level wizards can learn fourth level spells. Banishment forces a charisma saving throw on a creature. Failing that, they're sent to a harmless demiplane or their plane of origin. Open up your demon's gate and send the demons through it. Or just use Blight to force a constitution saving throw on a creature, dealing a d8 necrotic damage to those that fail. It's really good at hitting plants, or earth-type enemies, I suppose. Eighth level wizards get another ability score improvement. Go for intelligence for now. It's also very useful for your bigger spell effect stuff, which we'll grab next level when we get fifth level slots. We don't need any more fourth level options. Wizards of the Coast, uh, kind of phoned it in on fourth level, if I'm being real. Ninth level wizards can learn fifth level spells like Enervation, forcing a dexterity saving throw on a creature. Failing that, they take 4d8 necrotic damage and you recover half that amount in HP. On following turns, you can deal that damage again until you leave the range or a creature gets behind full cover. Just keep that astral drain going. Summon Draconic Spirit summons a large dragon you can ride on and command with your bonus action. It's got a breath attack, a rend attack, and can deal damage based on the type of dragon you summon. Necrotic seems to be right for Rose. The stats are in Fizbin's Treasury of Dragons. It just takes a while to read it out. 10th level Blade Singers get a Song of Defense, letting you spend spell slots as a reaction to reduce the damage of an incoming attack. The reduced damage is equal to five times the spell's level. It's another great option for blocking, though shield could possibly just stop an attack from hitting you altogether. 11th level wizards can learn 6th level spells. Tasha's otherworldly guise is a nice all-around dragoon transformation. It adds 2 to your AC, gives you a 40-foot flying speed, immunity to radiant and necrotic damage, or fire and poison damage, and the charmed condition or the poisoned condition. You can also use your intelligence modifier for weapon attacks, so next ability score will go for that instead. Disintegrate forces a dexterity saving throw on a creature, dealing 10d6 plus 40 force damage if they fail. If that kills them, they just straight up die. Most bosses will be immune to the demon's gate's insta-death power. They just must have good dexterity saves. 12 level wizards get another ability score improvement. Cap off your intelligence. Like I said last level, it's super good for a blade singer and is going to get even better in a bit. 13th level wizards get 7th level spells. Draconic transformation turns you into the dragon, giving you a 60 foot flying speed, blind sight, and a breath weapon that deals 6d8 force damage to creatures that fail a dexterity saving throw in a 60 foot cone. If they pass, they're into it. I mean, they take half damage. 14th level blade singers get Song of Victory, letting you add your intelligence modifier to the damage of your attacks you make with your blade song active. That means an 11 damage modifier from your melee weapon attacks. It's almost great weapon master levels on a rapier, which means you'll still have great AC from high dexterity as well. Rose is pretty busted in Legend of Dragoon. It's important she's busted here too. 15th level wizards can learn 8th level spells. Maddening darkness creates a 60 foot radius sphere of magical darkness, forcing a wisdom saving throw on creatures inside. Failing that, they take 8d8 psychic damage, half damage on a success, but no frightening effect, which seems weird. The spell is described as horrifying, but there's no official frightening effect. Seems like a missed opportunity to me. 16th level wizards get another ability score improvement. Cap off your dexterity for a plus 10 AC modifier while blade singing. In light armor, you'll have 22 base AC or 24 with haste or otherworldly guys up. Blade singers are so hard to hit. It's great. 17th level wizards can learn 9th level spells. True polymorph lets you turn a creature into another creature of challenge rating equal to or less than their total level. There's lots of great options for your black monster in the monster manual. I'll let you pick your personal favorite. It's weird that the build is ending getting the black monster since Rose's story sort of ends with her retiring it. It's just kind of high level.
level stuff in Dungeons and Dragons. Our capstone is the 18th level of Wizard for Spell Mastery, letting you pick a first and second level spell to cast at will. I'd go for Shadow Blade and Cause Fear to be in character, though Shield is kind of busted, especially on a Blade Singer, basically giving you plus 5 AC for free, as long as you don't mind skipping opportunity attacks. That's 27 forever. Holy macaroni. But Cause Fear is more in character. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you can deal consistent damage with a plus 12 damage modifier on every attack, extra attack to make two attacks per round, and action surge to do four attacks once per short rest. Or you could just use higher level spells to deal massive damage with Blight, Maddening Darkness, or Disintegrate. Oh, and you can turn into a dragon. Make your enemies fight a whole ass dragon, then fight you in your blade singing mode. For weaknesses, your charisma is pretty low for non-intimidation checks, so if people aren't into it, you could have trouble negotiating. You also have a lot of concentration spells and can only have one up at a time. Finally, activating all of your buffs will take a bit, so round one might not be as fun as round three. But patience is a virtue, and if you've been waiting for a new Legends of Dragoon game, you have a lot of patience. Unleash the power of the Dark Dragoon and protect the world. Just make sure you don't take it too far. It wouldn't hurt to hold back once in a blue moon. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon to watch the live streams and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.